Welcome to DMOP Garage. We're back yet again. Let's go and have a bit of a look-see at this thing. If you don't know what this is, it is 1952 Krankenwagen. A barn door ambulance and it is getting restored here in my garage. Now, last episode we painted all this and it's nice and shiny. And we did that little repair. Not too bad. Could have been a little bit better, but it, it'll do the job. Now, one thing. Does anybody know what these are? I don't know. There was one of them here. Bolted right there. And that's it. There was no hole in the middle. There's two holes now, so I'm probably going to have to put it back. But I don't know what it's for. I don't think it's for a fuel line because, well, there's no hole drilled in the middle of it. The O-ring below it is the little handle for your reserve switch for your fuel tank. But I don't know what that is. So, yeah, and there was one of them in a box of stuff with Haim with the buff. And this one was actually screwed on there. So, anyway, uh, clutch is ready to rock. The flywheel, we had that fixed up as well. What else? What else? We are going to put some brake lines in today. And I do have my brake line kit. These are all the pre-flared and, well, they're pre-bent, but we're going to have to unbend them. So we're going to stick those in now and then I can go and pick up the brakes. Yeah, then we can continue. So let's get some of these suckers mounted. Now, what has to happen, happen is we've got to go under and around and then through the hole up there and then down into, yeah, okay. So I've got a little bit of bending to do. All right, let's come over here. Okay, so we're coming down and then we're going to now yeah, clutch cable to get this all order. Two thousand years later. Okay guys, you can see I've gone and put the brake lines down the little clamp and all the way up the front here to the master cylinder. We've got all three hooked up. The lines runs along here. I've got to put one more uh, clamp in just there and put the rubber gaskets up the top there same thing over there that's the brake lines obviously our rubber tube got brand new rubber tubes as well which will go through the brakes and also we actually have the brakes i went and picked them up yesterday so you can see here they are bestest free brake pads that are glued onto the original uh, shoes and they've been obviously machined to fit perfectly. Also the surfaces have been ground. Our 22 mil wheel cylinders you can see here they have been re-sleeved with a stainless sleeve so they got done up at a shop in Castle Main. We have our new rubber seals that need to go inside those so yeah we can pretty much start rebuilding the brakes. We have the rear all the rear brakes down here too same deal again all that's been redone. So yeah, we'll start assembling that stuff one one step closer to getting this thing on on its wheels And we can also start uh, looking at these. I think what I'm going to do is get the front Drums on and then we can spin up these rims. Just I just want to see how good they are uh, I mean I have a, a couple of excess ones So I want to make sure nothing is really badly warped or buckled or so we'll just pick the best ones We're going to use go from there. Let's get on to rebuilding the shoes rear brakes time We're going to get these sorted. We've got our backing plate. I've just put a little bit of um, RTV on the back here These don't actually run a gasket around here. They just run the o-ring uh, But just in case anyway, let's uh, pop this on so and we're going to put our cap on. I do have the little O-ring inside there, by the way, just in case someone does ask. Now I'm tight notes. Okay, so this is what we are looking at. You can see here, 
we have put the large o-ring now we need to put a spacer which is this guy so that goes on like so next we put the small o-ring small o-ring i like to put a bit of rubber grease on this as well because i just don't trust the quality of the rubbers these days make sure we've got nothing on here that's going to damage our o-ring we just want to roll it on there we go and we've got a spacer that's the spacer that goes next and there's a little chamfered edge a little bit of rubber grease on that inside chamfer that goes against the o-ring like that and then we've got our gasket to put in too we can put him in last seal in first right this might work That could to potentially be a fail. I think that is a fail. Oh, that one did not go in straight. Probably wasn't the best way to do it. I have more and we're gonna need them. Okay, take two. I have another one, better quality. Just make sure this surface here is good. Now what I am gonna do this time, now we can put this guy in. Make sure we've got a bit of rubber grease around it. We wanna get it nice and sealed. Oh no, there it goes. Popped it in position. Okay, next is the wheel cylinder. This is the brand new ones. These you can buy. They're the 19 uh, mil for the rears. You just can't buy the front ones new. So anyway, that mounts in like so. Bolted from the other side, of course. And before anyone says anything like, that's supposed to be up the top. No, it's not. Uh, it's a 52 barn door and everything is weird and wacky on this model. So this is correct. Next we have our little brake adjusters. These are all nicely glass beaded back. Look brand new, don't they? A little bit of grease on them, just on that rotating areas. Pop them in and we've just got to use a screwdriver to pop them up underneath that little spring. Like that. And I've just got those wound pretty much all the way in like so. Okay, get some shoes. Okay, next we have one of the, the brake shoe with the handbrake lever. And you can see here I've put a new little clip on the back with the rivet. That's going to go in this position like so. And we'll just pop the handbrake cable through the hole first. Uh, we'll get that sorted in a second. Generally, that's how this is going to go. Let's get our little retaining pins. Clip that on like so. Pop the spring on. And deal. Sure it is lined up home. Now we're just going to sort out the back of the handbrake cable. So I just had to backtrack just to get that clamp in for the handbrake cable. You've got to put that in first before you attach it over the top of that. Then we've got this little arm which equalizes the two I suppose. It's got a little cut out here. It goes like that. We'll just rest it there. We've got the next brake to put in now and then we can put the springs in and we're done. I'll put our little pin through the back on an angle. Long goes at the top, short at the bottom. One eternity later. Okay, so take two. Uh, I took the top one off, put the bottom one on first, and that just went in easy. Now, I think this, because it's just a longer spring, this will be a lot easier to put the top one in, so we'll go... We'll go with that theory. Hopefully we're right. I think we're right. Just so got to get you into your slot. There we go. Yeah, a lot better. There we go. That's better. Make sure we've got them centered. And then we can do our adjustments. That looks about right. Everything looks happy. Give it the drum. Oh, I have put the oil slinger in too. Almost had forgotten to do that. Done. Right, now, crank her up. Just on three for now. For some reason, this thing is very stiff. Yeah, it's stiff in neutral. Probably the angle of the shaft, and also probably because there's no oil in any of it. I'd say that's probably it too. 
I suppose we'll find out later on, won't we, if there's something completely wrong, but I don't think so. So we are on to the front wheel cylinders. We've got to assemble these. They come with all the internal little components. We have our new rubber, I suppose, whatever you, whatever you want to call them. These little stopper parts that go inside. Anyway, we've just got a little bit of brake fluid here. We just want to put a little bit around them, a little bit inside. I oh, know I'm not supposed to be touching it, but I'm out of gloves at the moment, which is rather annoying. So this little springy stopper goes inside first. Then we need to have, that's going to go like that. And then that has to go like that. And those, that actual stopper, these go like so. There we go. Make sure that they pop in. And we can put our pistons in, same deal. Got a bit of brake fluid on them. These little parts here are next. They go like so. Then we put our dust boot on. Refurbished wheel cylinder. Okay, let's get on, on to number two. Number two is done. All right, let's uh, take them over to the bus and get them in. Okay, let's uh, put the wheel cylinder on. I figured I might as well just hand screw this on here just to start with. And then we can do the rest of it later. Okay, next is the brake adjusters, same as the back. And they're greased up. They slot into their little... Now that one there is probably going to want to fall out, so we'll just leave him until we're ready to put that brake shoe in. We can put the top brake shoe in now. Orientation is like so. Okay, a couple of retaining springs and we're good. Good. Okay, that one's done. Let's uh, move on to the other. Actually, we might as well get the whole drum and everything on. So we've got our little collar on there already, a spacer collar. So now we just make sure I have already gone and um, cleaned these up for the bearings. So we'll get the drums and the bearings set up and yeah, get them installed. As you can see, bearings inside and seal. And we're just gonna slip this sucker on. And we need to make sure that we've got no grease on that surface. We'll go and get the other bearing. Oh yeah, that's nice. Take it out, take it out because we forgot to put the spacer in. We forgot to put the spacer in, so we've got to come back out again. Damn it! <laughs> it actually rides inside the bearing. I'll go and put it in, be back in a sec. Okay, take two. <laughs> um, she's back on, so all good. Spacer, and then we need our one nut. Okay, so we are tightening this first nut. We just get it snug, just test it. Back it off a tiny bit. Make sure it's spinning nice, that's good. Our, our little lock washer, or yeah. And then we can bend our tabs. Uh, grab our cap, one without the hole in it, and we're going to go and pack this full of grease. Go and grab our, and then we'll go and adjust up our brakes after that. But we are good. Okay, guys. So it is the next day. I have the roller door shot because it's freezing. I have a new oven, courtesy of my mate Craig, and this one here we're going to use for doing little parts on powder coating. Now update, the last couple of days obviously we got all the brakes done on front and back so had a bit of an issue with one of the reduction hubs and what had happened, I went to spin this and it was binding and, and I was thinking oh hang on something's not right here and I thought it was binding on the ground because the axle tubes were on a slight angle and I figured yeah that's probably once it's mounted it'll come good, well it didn't come good and what the issue was, I'll just show you over here, this reduction hub, the gaskets that I had put between the, the front and the back, I never really had a measurement of what it needed to be. So 
I just put a paper one in there thinking it was all good, tightened this all up, chucked it in. Now, what happened, this ended up being too close together and it was binding on the bearing behind here and it was actually making this thing not wanting to spin properly. So I had to pull it all apart again, which was a nightmare, as you'd imagine. Luckily, I didn't put any oil in it. So, and I made two new gaskets, which ended up being about two mil thick rubber ones to get this thing back to spec again. So no big deal. I mean, it just meant, you know, I've got to put the, the rest of the drum back on again and, you know, we're good to go. Obviously, one of the next things we have to do now is the rims. So they're going to need some work. You know, interesting that one of these rims here has rivets instead of it being welded around here. Now, not all of them do. So I don't think these are a matching, a matching set. Uh, these ones have got, I did, I did see the date stamp on it, and that one says 52. This one also is a 52, so I, I suspect these two are original to the bus. This one is welded, so that is a, a 54, and... That's a 52. So those three are original to the bus, and I think these two are... Oh, no, that one is too. Okay, that's a riveted one as well. So we do have four riveted, and obviously the spare is a 54 because I did see the date stamp on that one. Anyway, they have to be sandblasted and painted in the cream colour, same as the, uh, the rest of the bus. And hubcaps, we need to get chrome hubcaps, so... I think that's what they came out from factory. I do have a bunch of uh, hubcaps here, which are obviously, yeah, all the originals. I might get them re-chromed. I'll see how we go. If not, I'll just have to probably buy a, a set of chrome ones, which I don't really want to do. I don't think they're original, because I'm pretty sure original would have come out with chrome from photos that I've seen. Now, one more thing. The heads have arrived. I can show you those down here. That's from a local shop here in Mornington did all the valve stems you can see here they did a great job brand new exhaust valves I think the intakes were okay and then springs so they're they're good to go obviously these need to be cleaned and I want to get these shafts polished so we're going to quickly pull these apart and clean them up and then we can get those mounted onto the heads and then I don't know if he's awake in here or not let's have a look oh are you in there no, Arvin boy's still, I don't know where he is, but he's got to come and help me put the rest of this motor together. So we'll, I don't know, we'll bang on the door later on and see if he comes out. All right, let's uh, get these things cleaned up. Uh, we'll pull them apart, go from there. Now what we want to do is make sure that these all go back exactly how they went back in. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think we might just go and take this and give it a polish up, clean all the crap off it. I did, I did clean these, but I think we're just going to go and run them through the polisher and see, see if we can get them better. They're not bad, but you can see you can see the wear marks, wear mark, wear mark, wear mark, wear mark, and then if you spin them over, no wear mark. So we are going to do a rotation and put them the other way, but I, I just want to see if I can clean them up. We'll go and chuck them on the buffer. Let's see what see what happens. A few moments later. Okay, so back from the buffer, and you can see. That's come up a lot nicer. It's got a couple of little score marks there, but nothing to worry about. It's going to be in the middle where the spring is. But yeah, that's come up way better. That just, just used a bit of metal polish on the buffing wheel. Fantastic. Uh, let's continue. We might try and clean these guys up a little bit as well. See how we go with those. So we've just cleaned up a few of these um, cam lifter guys. And let's um, start assembly. Put it back together. I've got some assembly lube here as well. We're going to start just by putting our split pin in one end, like so. Washer. And we might just put a little bit of lube on this thing. There you go. Looks a little bit nicer than that guy. We'll clean him up next. We can get him mounted in one of the heads here. All right, I almost forgot to put the <laughs> the lash caps on because you can see the, the each one of the valve stems, they're actually a different height. So we've got a, these uh, inlet ones have a little cap that goes on top. So yes, 
I'll probably put a little bit of assembly lube on those too, just in case. Now we can do some fitting. Now let's get this one sorted. Okay, like so. Excellent, 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 excellent. Let's do this one. Okay, don't they look beautiful? Uh, they're pretty much ready to get installed. Let's move on. I've got some sandblasting of the rims. One of them's done down there. That one just needs one clip on it for the hubcap. And this one, I think, original clips on this one, which is good. Yeah, we'll get this one blasted. We'll get all five of them done and then put some phosphoric acid on them, primer, and then paint. I'm not gonna powder coat these, I'll just paint them because I don't. it's gonna to be too difficult to get the powder matched to the, the buster, and I have plenty of that paint, so that will work just perfectly. All right, I reckon I'll get these blasted in the next episode. That'll do it for this one, guys. Thanks again for all the new subscribers on this journey. We'll see you in the next episode.